sequence of play to get ready. Just want to see if it comes up on YouTube. Wait for that. And I need to get us a tweet ready. Oh yeah, here we go. That'll be good. That hey, we're live. Oh, here we go. Okay. Looks like we're there. Uh, yep. So, hello, everybody. Um, Blue Tweet is here. Uh, and um, if you were looking for another round of uh, Nemesis Burma 1944, that's uh, it's no longer um, Flavor of the Month. We've moved on or moved backwards to uh, Great War in Europe from uh, Command Magazine GMT, and uh, here, of course, with uh, my erstwhile uh, opponent here, Pat. Say hi, Pat. Hello, Pat. <laughs> never gets old. Uh, never gets old saying it never gets old. Um, yes. Okay, so uh, we're on uh, uh, We're on our, uh, yeah, on our Western map here, and yeah, hopefully you can see it. If anybody's there, if they can... Uh, just uh, send us a message so you can hear us, but uh, you should be able to, I think. Uh, everything's green along the board here. Um, indeed. So uh, oh, well, yeah. we, have, we have five people watching, which uh -huh. is tremendous. Wonderful. Ah, well, yeah, we've got Stampede. I'll have to get some bouncers in to control the crowds. Indeed, uh, indeed. <laughs> let, let me fight to get the tweet out. All right, there we go. We're ready to go. I got the tweet out. So let's talk Hello. about. Let, so we're playing the um, you know the grand campaign. Yes. And uh, as I I did a multi part tweet, you know, all all warm and gushy. And this this game really um, as as we decided to play it and um, got into the rules, really really struck my fancy. I, I you know the first game I ever played was Guns of August, which is a horrific slog. You know, we don't have to go into that. And and for years, I've tried to play a grand strategic, um, you know, game on the Great War. And as I just started going through this, I'm like, wow, uh, you know, Ted Racer, I feel this is me going into it. You know, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully my opinion won't change. Right. But yeah. it's, it's very straightforward. But there's a lot of player agency. And mm -hmm. and I and I, where it abstracts, I like. And yeah. the thing that finally sold me was the what we're playing with, which is the optional pre-war chits. And, and I mm. and I think what I like about what I saw with them, Alan, mm. was like some of the names are a little outlandish for the chits. Like the Czar Michael one is probably the most outlandish. Yes. But 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 that's a name in terms of the effect, right? Mm. Just you know, a more stable czarist regime is what it really is. You know, yes. slight slightly more stable, not even yeah, more yeah. stable, right? Yes. You know, the effects of them all are all kind of within the realm of the possible uh, of the possible. Right. So you can take mm. this quirky conflict. Right. You know, and how it mm. worked out. And, and I, I and I think all the pre-war options I saw were absolutely within the realm of the possible. You know, they were all considered. Yes. And I think not only does it lend to, to playability, playability, but in a. It's where a little a historicity in some way makes you more historical. Yeah. In that, in, in that you're all right. So you're dealing with this conflict, and it, the the particulars of even how it kicks off, mm. don't necessarily have to go that way. Y yeah, you know? you, 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 yeah. You 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 haven't got complete hindsight, um, in uh, in in how it's going to play, um, because uh, something may be radically different. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I've I've um, <clears throat> I've had the game for a, a long time. Uh, the, the the Command Magazine version. Um, from uh, probably the last century, to be honest. Um, Ooh, the yeah. age, I know, uh, and I did play it quite a bit back then, but it was a very long time ago, and it's been uh, languishing on the shelf. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so we uh, we were going through what to play next, and uh, this seemed like a good good idea. Um, I, I, I remember liking the game. Uh, I haven't played the pre-war stuff before. Uh, I must admit that. Um, uh, but I did, did like the game. A couple, couple of bits um, I was um, not so enamoured about it, but um, the uh, kind of mechanics which fit but are slightly artificial, um, which uh, always um, kind of, uh, yeah, did, didn't quite ring true. But uh, as a game, it's very, very solid. Um, it's what I would say the quintessential playable monster. Um, so um, 
and uh, and it's not as you say like guns of August. It's not kind of yeah, loads loads of people, loads of people in oh. trenches. Somebody loses a step. Somebody else loses a step. Right, then, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of what, thing. One of the things I liked immediately uh, is the fact that there are no zocks, yeah. and that that if you're out of supply, you're dead. So what it does is it it creates the impetus to have at the division level, right? So, so any slogginess, the, the the constant tension to maintain a line, yes, it, it's all on you. It's not Ooh. the system and how the mechanics work and how the CRT work that are making that happen. That's you know, right. you know yeah. that, that 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 that's it. That's at your shoes, and 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 so, so at a very basic mechanical level, I I, I really like that, and and yeah, it just you know feels straight. So, sure. I are if you um ha pull up your West map, you'll see I I changed. Yeah, I, I immediately had a mistake and had placed some guys you know in Holland, so I moved them back oh, to yeah. Aachen. I moved them back yeah. to Aachen, but other other than that, everybody's cool. Yeah, that was that was a different shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it was when, when we were doing the setup, which we did mm -hmm. offline. I had, um, you know, just like, oh, it's a pretty neat hex. It's like a big hex, right? It was yeah, a big six yeah. shape, and I was like, oh yeah, that's that's right. that that's a violation of of yeah. Netherlands neutrality. So if we look at the the setup that we, so let's talk about the chits mm -hmm. that that we picked and what we chose and and what we're hoping to do with them before we sure. go through show everybody our setups and then get into it. So you you first, yeah, yeah sure. So so I, I picked two two chits and, and pretty much not very much to do with the Western Front at all. Um, they were the um, the fact that uh, there was a Tsar Michael rather than Tsar Nicholas, um, and what that means is that there's a chit that appears later on in the game, and uh, chits appear throughout the game in what's known as strategic turns, uh, which are usually every three turns, uh, sometimes two, in, in the winter, and um, those chits are available to be picked. Um, during the phases, uh, the, the turns in between those strategic turns, but they all, you, you get a lump uh, every uh, strategic turn. And um, so one of those is the Sar takes command, which is you know, the idea that, um, that Nicholas uh, took command and uh, everybody thought he was a complete idiot. Uh, yeah, th things, had, things had gone badly, right, yes, right. And, yeah. and so and, the solution, uh, so, <clears throat> right, right. Yeah, so he, 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 had, he, he had nowhere to hide uh, with the disasters on the, on the front. Uh, against the Germans and the Austrians, so he could be blamed and therefore hasten the resolution. So that chit is effectively removed from the game. It doesn't exist. Um, so that should effectively give the uh, the Russians a lot more stability later on in the game. Um, so it's not a it's not an early early game advantage here, but a later one. And let's hope I get that far. Yeah. Um, it's. I think it's the most fantastical of those pre-war chits, and I don't mean that in a, in a bad way. It certainly could have happened, right? That Tsar Michael. Tsar Michael was the youngest son of um, of Alexander the Third, so so he, he was still alive. He was the heir apparent, and and they presuppose that he uh, Nicholas abdicates during the 1905 revolution when Alexei the Tsarevich. The yeah. historical Zarovich was, um, you know, an infant, yes, and right. and um, so Michael Alexander, which is the now Zar Michael, you know, in in, yeah. in our little alternate universe, yeah. assumes control. But what it, what it really comes down to is more that you know there were more enhanced, it, the, the hard Duma options were assumed. So really, it's like a slightly more stable Russia as a result mm -hmm. of the 1905 revolution in game terms later on, like I, I think the Russians go through a period where there's a first revolution and a second revolution. Yeah. yeah. And what it does is there's a plus two modifier to that role for that first revolution that never happens. Mm -hmm. So, so the revolution's probably going to happen, you know, yes, but, but just takes more time. Delayed. Yes, right. indeed. yes, yes. And what was what was the second yeah. shit you so, had? So, so the second one was uh, the second one I had was Turkey or the Ottoman Empire uh, hesitates. Um, so rather than rushing into war after the German and the Breslau and uh, a few negotiations happened, um, this obviously um, they've uh, they've they've not completely made up their mind and they're seeing they want to sit it out, a bit like the Italians really, I suppose, um, uh, sitting it out to see how well. The, uh, the central powers do before joining in. Um, and so rather than uh, their uh, normal entry, which is in the November turn, um, they actually will only join once there is a, a number of victory points on the board for the central powers. I think it was 10, was it? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's and that happened historically. There was a debate within the Young Turks, you know, the clique that was running the Ottoman Empire at the time, Ooh. and I, I forget I forget the uh, specific personalities. Wesley, I want to say hi, Simo, and hi. History of the Second oh, yeah. War podcast, which is really Wes, who was also History of the, of the, the Great War podcast. Yeah. And, and he could probably cor uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, 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 th I think one of the ministers who was one of the prime movers in the Young Turks resigned because, you know, about the early entry, you know? Yes. Uh, but, yes. But, so, but it was certainly possible. But in this game, what it means is, I, I, what, isn't it, I think the Central Powers need to have 10 victory points or have a 10 yes. victory point lead. So they, yep. they've got to be it's not a crazy number, but they've got to be showing it's some success, way. right? Right yeah. before the before you know before the Turks decide they can't miss the bus, sure. you know, you know, and, uh, and, and, and pile on, right? Yeah, and and in and in the game here, we're, we're combining the Great War in the East and the Great War in the Near East, which was uh, two different games which could work together in the Command Magazine. That the uh, GMT provided both in the, in the same right. Pot. The deluxe and, edition. Right. Pretty yeah. much the Near East is about Turkey. Um, right. And until Turkey actually comes in, there's there's nothing going on really there. So it's effectively, not quite, but almost half the game map is is kind of redundant until that point, uh, which in the normal game is not very long, um, but here could be considerably longer. And um, you know, if I bring up that uh, that map... Well, before before you do that, so, so both your options yeah. are pretty political, right? Yes. So, yeah. so the, the ones I chose, um, I, I believe I got as an option because you draw three out of the ten, mm -hmm. and you you could just choose two. The one I didn't choose was um, less naval construction. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just threw that one away, and so. so I took uh, the the first one I chose was Albert Caves, so. Mm -hmm. If you guys see right now on the west map you know as it's being yeah. displayed the yes this is the deluxe edition simo um yeah. if you if you look at the the map there's no belgian fortress units or belgian units so albert caved the, what happens is the germans don't get the victory points for those locations mm -hmm. but there's no opposition y yeah. you know I, yeah. I believe the way they um the, the germans uh viewed it was they expected the belgians to line the routes line the uh, the the side of the uh the roads going through belgium their, their army would basically stand aside and watch the german army flow through um which i think was kind of not really what no what was actually going to happen anyway um but in this case um you know the, the Bel uh, belgian government has gone well okay that's fine if you, you want to go through that's fine and you know i suppose uh whether whether that's actually uh, what happens now or not is kind of irrelevant to the game, um, but yes, there is no there is no Belgians yeah, so uh, if you, in the game. So if you see, um, as we kind of look at the setup, I uh, so by game rule, I, I had to have thirty divisions north of I'm going to call it hex row fifty two hundred ish, you yeah. know, uh, something like that. So kind of like the middle of where it says like EM in Luxembourg, yeah. I had to have more than thirty divisions north of that. So. I've actually maxed out. I've gone more Schlieffen than Schlieffen. Yeah, you know, I've got I've got a little bit more than even that up there. I've got three armies, and my, my setup limit was within um, three hexes of Aachen there. Mm -hmm. And we, as we see, there's like nobody to stop me. No road bumps, nothing. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, everything's been emptied out. Yes. And, and so that that shit helped drive my strategy, which is normally I uh, in other World War One games I've played them. Caught Schlieffen never seems to work. I'm very cautious, but I'm like, wow, maybe I'm in on the Schlieffen here. And there's a slight political effect where essentially U.S. entry, which normally occurs on a given strategic turn, is delayed a little bit. Yeah, because the next strategic turn, yes. No Belgian resistance, no Belgian atrocities that can be propagandized. Yeah, no you know, you know, right. library or anything like that. Absolutely. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. So, so the second shit I got was, you'll notice... So the game starts, it's really, we're talking about August 6th to 7th, okay? Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, not, not literally, but that, you know, that's the way the turns work. And the BEF should be in Mons. So if we look at Mons here, you'll see there is no BEF. And that's because the second shit I got was aggressive high seas fleet. So uh, it, uh, that presupposes, now all the naval stuff in this game is, is abstracted. 
Okay. So what that presupposes is that the high seas fleet has sortied and the BEF, you know, a naval action has to be fought or at the very least um, the allies have to, the British have to be cautious about not losing the BEF, getting it across. So this means when we get to strategic turn B, if we go go all the way over to the left of the map, you'll see Laharve. That's where the BEF will show up. Although uh, I, I think it's it's strategic A, a, a in a. La Havre right. or B at any other port. At any other port. So if yeah. I leave yeah. another port uncontrolled, he could land at say Ostend, not uh, not in Belgium actually, but like Calais or Dunkirk or something yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So so, so strategic turn A is after two normal operational turns. So there's, right. there's two August turns if you like, and. Uh, then there's the, the strategic turn, and then there's the September turn at the first group of three. So as we show you guys all the, the Western setup, what we basically have here is a Belgium that has no road bl speed bumps Ooh. and no B and no BEF. So, yeah. so, so Schlieffen, you know, it's Max Schlieffen. It's, it's about as Schlieffen friendly as you're going to get. Mm. You know, you know, in, 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 in given the strategic situation. So, and what I liked about so those two chits as example, very plausible, right? Albert could have mm. caved, and yep. uh, there was a lot of debate about the German Navy about trying to contest the BEF, and they they just it didn't happen, and the Kaiser you know sided with the with with the Navy, but could have. So okay, so let's take a look if you want to Alan at the east map. I'll let yeah, you sure. so, orient people to that. Yeah. So uh, just for information's sake, the, the there was a um, uh, a chip that I rejected, which was probably a good thing, uh, which was actually a, a BEF a deployment chip, um, so that it was a flexible deployment in that I could um, I could deploy rather than be at Mons, I could be in any of the ports. Um, however, or within I think four hexes of any of the ports, um, but of course, actually what what really, given the the chit there, that would have been effectively, you know, cancelled um, by, uh, by by Pat's chit. So um, it was probably lucky I didn't pick that one. So um, yeah, here we are on the uh, on the east map. So uh, we're going sort of Greece, uh, Greece and Constantinople all the way up to the Baltic, of course. Um, and uh, we have Berlin on the map here, and then uh, we go, I think, as far as. Um, my computer's deciding to slow down a bit here. As far as Smolensk, um, and uh, yeah, as we see the Russians here in green, uh, and they're setting up as they would normally be. So there's nothing particularly unusual about the setup here in in uh, in the east. And there is um, there is various controls on what you can set up where, um, and and uh, we've been through that. Uh, so we have the standard first army around Kovno, and then we have the second army around Warsaw. Uh, and then, uh, of course, we've got the Galicia front as well, the Austrians and the Russians. Uh, and then further down, we have the central group of undecided Austrians uh, in the middle, uh, which you've placed as far towards the Galician front as you can, rather than the Serbian front. And we, of course, we have the Serbians and Montenegrins here down south here up against the uh, the Austrians. So the Austrians are going to have, um, you know, they're going to have their work cut out against the Serbs here without the any of the extra guys coming down uh, from the undecided group. Uh, further down here, nothing much happening, of course, because the Greeks, the Bulgarians, Tur uh, the Ottoman Empire, the Romanians are not in. Um, and that's uh, that's that front. Um, yeah, the it's interesting. One of the things I liked about the, the game, once again, in the pre-war events, right, like that's possible for as another example of the replayability and the plausibility mm -hmm. is there's a chit where the Austrians can pull plan R. So all those guys that are, you see deployed near Budapest, you know, where I, 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 yeah. I as far as I could get was kludge. Those would be deployed with the main yes. force up there against the Russians. Right. Yes. So, yeah, you know, you know, they, gives these little these little tweaks and it, 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 the intro one of the things i liked about this compared to other once again other uh, great war you know strategic grand strategic slash grand strategic games i've played is instead of giving the germans a bunch of wacky restrictions on their setups there all he did is said here's the forces right and here's some fortress units and they can only be placed in fortresses 
So it, it then lends you to say, well, since I have to place the fortress units in fortresses, perhaps I should set up making use of that, which is what they did historically. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, it, it, yeah. I, I just, it's one of the things I really admire is just the lack of the heavy handedness. Yeah, you know, in, you know, just letting things play out based on how the game works. Um, and then you want to take yeah. a look at the Near East, which is. Uh, yeah, just wanted to, wanted to mention something for everybody who's not familiar with the game. So uh, around Königsberg or the word Königsberg, they, there's a there's a chick called Oberost. So um, for a, a lot of the game, uh, the Germans have uh, effectively this chick which can be, well, there's two sides to it, it's Oberost, which for the Eastern Front, or OHL for the Western Front. And effectively, that allows a double attack. Um, you get to decide which front you want it on every strategic turn, and then you can use it once during one of the operational turns before the next strategic turn. Um, so, and at the start, it starts with Oberost. So I think this is kind of the Tannenberg kind of chit uh Dannenberg effect chit here um, right yeah what this is but uh, that's that's always around and always always available um so yeah near east uh and so it's uh it's going to be quite quiet for um most of the time uh where is it gone uh, there we go yeah. right. so this is um this is a rather bitsy map it's yes three maps um so you've got the palestine area You've got the Caucasus area, and then you've got the Iraq area. So um, on the right here, we've got uh, the Caucasus area here, Russian Empire, Ottoman Empire, and and Persia here. Um, and this goes down uh, not very far, actually, uh, just sort of halfway into An Anatolia um, and towards the desert. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's a front. And the, as you'll note, the the um, uh, the units here have a stripe on them, a white stripe, uh, and uh, that denotes that they're east front, uh, near eastern units, near eastern front units. Uh, the Turks have them as well. Um, and then we have these other two maps. We've got the Iraq map here, which, as you see, is not much on it. And um, yeah, it's it's really centered on the, the British advance to towards Baghdad and then their hasty retreat and the siege in Kut. And um, yeah, it's 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 a bit of a backwater, but it is in the game. Um, and uh, finally, there's the um, the Egypt and Palestine map here, uh, which goes from the Suez Canal all the way up to uh, where we're almost to Beirut. So um, yeah. all the, uh, the, the the Holy Land sort of area and the Sinai. Since peace reigns right now, it, you know, in these theaters, we probably uh, you know won't go too in depth on it, but there. Yeah. The, the way um, the designer handled supply and the Sinai pipeline and everything yes. works, works I think works very well in this theater in yes. terms of like w when playing on it, you're, you know, once again, it's your great war in the Near East, but, mm. you, you know, it, it, it's, it, it gives you the room to express yourself within, I think the historical, uh, uh, the, the historicity was, was implemented in not a railsy way. Yeah, sure. you know, right? Yeah, like, and like, of course, this, this, I mean, uh, in this deluxe edition from GMT, this is actually a scenario in its own right, but also on the command magazine, this is actually a game in its own right, completely. Right, right. Um, so you, you don't have to even play the main bit of World War One, you can just play this. Um, right. So there is, there is a certain, you know, it, it, it's not tedious, it's not boring or anything. Things do happen here, right? Uh, and, there, and there are relevant chits as well, of course, um, for, uh, for uh, that, that affect this map, um, things like the pipeline. Uh, across the Sinai and uh, right, you know, right, yeah, pieces. So and the Armenian, uh, the Armenian uh, part in the uh, in the uh, in the Caucasus as well. It's uh, it's significant. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the Near East map. Um, but as I say, we'll be putting that sort of filing out away for the moment um, and concentrating on the other two, uh, east and west. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right, um, West. They they um, it they changed the orientation to basically make it fit on the map on like one map better. Yeah. Yes. But, I, but, but it's also taken into consideration. You're going to have two people sitting across from each other, but that's yeah. why, yeah, Palestine's basically up quote on it's South to North and not North to South. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I, I mean, for, for those people who find it a little bit odd, I suggest you take your monitor and turn it upside down. and then you. Yeah. Like, I'm sure that's really easy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a little trip, uh, a trick I like to do. 
<laughs> sorry. Right. Um, All right. So I think okay. we're ready to ready. To, so so this game. Another last note is it, it has these different maps. So uh, why don't you show them just what your vassal module looks like with the map with all the maps closed there. Alan. Uh, sure. Um, well, and, yeah, 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 yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. So, so, so you choose these maps and the way the game's supposed to work, which is a truly a time saver for like they say, I think what helps make it a playable monster mm -hmm. is there's simultaneous movement. So, so, so the way the game works is on each of those maps is a theater. And uh, the, the, the side that has the initiative chooses whether he wants, so there's two movement phases that are simultaneous. Mm. And the side that has the initiative can choose to go first or second, you know, in each one of those movement phases. And basically, while so, so for example, as the central powers, I'm going to choose to go first, obviously, on the Western map, right? Ooh. So while I'm moving there, Alan should be moving on the East map. Okay, yeah. right? You know, he's doing all his movement. Then we do um, the first combat phase where I do combat. Yeah, and then we there's a second movement phase where he moves because he's not because he goes second on the west and yeah. I go second in the east and then he does his combats. So it kind of should speed the game up. But for the first turn or two or something like that, we're probably gonna go through them one at a time. You know, so so yeah. we both watch each other and we don't make mistakes as well as you yeah. know it's, it's easier for you to look at. And, and later on, we'll work out the tech spec of hey, can we have two maps up at the same time while we're moving? But that's yeah, so a, just, pretty just, unique, a pretty unique little mechanic in the game. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I just want to uh, just want to clarify here. So on the combat phases, there are mutual combat phases. So uh, so the first combat phase you'll see here would be um, done by the Germans in the or the the um, central powers in uh, the west. But there will be combat from the Russian side in the east and the Serbian side in the east. And then there's a second movement phase, and then then there's a second mutual combat phase in which the French and the British would be would be doing the combats in the West. Right. And right. It. So so it, it's it's not that there's two the the the, the combat phases are uh, symmetrical with the movement phases for the particular theatres. Yeah. Right. It's just yeah. right. It's it's just there's a first one and the people who are moving then do their do their combat after they move basically yeah, on, right, yeah, yeah. On, on each, in each theater yeah that, right, that's right 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 good right so okay. are, are we re um so let's since we're, we're about to start ready to, ready to go is there anything so let's let's address the special early rules and and see if there's anything make sure we're not going to miss anything about the game start um so in august I, I'll have the initiative on the Western maps and you're going to have it on the East. There's no choice there. Yep. yep. Um, French and Russian units defending and fortifications and less defending and fortifications. Yes. Suffer one column shift to the right when defending and a one column shift to the left when attacking, which is basically just bad, the, yes. the bad, the bad way. Yes. Um, no units with a V, X, or Y setup code may move or attack during game turns one and two. And what are those? They're fortress units. Yeah. You're right. All the stuff in the fortress. Right. Stuff like that. Yeah. Russian one and two units, first and second army, may not stack yeah. or attack together during game turns one and two. Yeah. Nobody can do strategic movement, so we won't see how that works until after August is over. And there's some Belgian special rules that don't matter because the Belgians do not exist anymore as a, as a military force. And um, it, the other, only other thing is um, movement is doubled on mm -hmm. the Western Front, correct? Or is it, it is. Um, right? Um, for how long is that again, Alan? Uh, it's until um, it's just something to do with the trenches, I think, when the trenches appear. Um, I think I think that's I have to look that up actually exactly when that that finishes. Um, but uh, certainly that's uh, that's at the start. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, Is it, I think it's October. I yes. Say October. Yeah. yeah I'm, we'll, 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 we will suss that out. But essentially, yeah. everyone's very mobile and everything moves very, very quickly. Yeah. But right. And then so the movement factors you'll see in front of you are all doubled mm -hmm. until until we get to that point where, where units can begin to entrench and then they're not doubled anymore and that's just the western front i believe correct alan it's not 
That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's not every, everywhere. All right. So let's yeah. let us go to the sequence of play, shall we? I, uh, I, I think yeah. I think I think we're good. I think we're ready. Yep. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay. So um, yeah, what we'll do is even though there's a kind of simultaneous thing here, we'll we'll be doing one map at a time anyway. So right. Let's start with the west map. Um, that's, uh, and it actually says in the combat phase, do the West map first as well. So for combat, so we're, we're kind of following a convention. So the, there are these strategic turns, and this is not one of them. So, no, so no. right, uh, that'll be in after the turn after next. So we go to the the operational um, sequence of play. Yeah, and we pick chits to start off with, but we don't have any. So. Right, right. So uh, that doesn't happen. What, what section is the sequence of play in for the operational? So, in the rules here. Yep, yeah, just uh, eight, page yeah. eight, section four. Okay. Yeah, section yeah four. Yeah, that's right. Section four is sequence of play. All right, so we so start off. Phase, with... We don't do anything. There's no new units. Everybody's on the board. Right. Um, there would be these boxes. You can probably see on the uh, where some there's a, there's one in the corner, top left hand corner of the screen. Uh, it's a new units box um, to place from. Uh, weather determination, um, that's done on the turn track. There are some variables, but it's fairly fixed. Uh, at the moment, it's fair. Um, right, there's right. nothing on there, so there's nothing special to do there. And the first mutual, uh, mutual movement phase. Uh, so we're doing the Western Front. Here we go. Moment, so get, get, go. Right, get right into it as I right. proceed. Let, let's see if I can out Schlieffen Schlieffen, all right? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Schliefen to the Schliefen to the max. All right, yeah, so yeah. let's see here. So let me get my little terrain chart up here until I get completely used to it. All right. Yeah, so, um, David, the um, uh, simultaneous movement thing. That's right. It, that's that's when I said the, the idea of it was it was one of the quintessential um, uh, playable monsters. Is that there isn't the downtime you usually get with a strategic game where you're waiting for the other side to do everything of their turn before you can do really do very much yeah. and certainly in a world war one game you're not actually doing much reaction movement if you like um so yeah it was it, it was very nice to play it uh on the board if you like because there is no uh no need to uh you know to sit down sit on your hands kind of thing um although uh that's not to say that on some of the fronts they tend to take a little bit more than the others so it's it's not completely equitable but uh uh, it was yeah, well, that was one of the innovations I think of the game at the time, which was quite remarkable. Uh, indeed. So um, <clears throat> right, so we've got the a cavalry charge. Yeah, we are spreading out, as they say. Yeah. All right, a little screen, and then let's see here. I think we want to go. So my um, my fortress guys in Mode Berge. Um, not feeling very well now, seeing as the Belgians have uh, sold them out, so to speak. Um, so yeah, my uh, my setup for the uh, for the French was restricted to um, nothing north of where you can see in the bottom right uh, right hand area the the line kind of abruptly stops uh, opposite Luxembourg, and you can't actually place any of your free uh, free setup units anywhere north of that. Everything up there further up there is actually specified as a hex uh with the exception of the two cavalry corps um which do have a um a restriction about uh, being on the mers um but uh that was as far north as i could effectively get them um uh, so uh, yeah it's a very open start uh, up here and there's usually um the bef there standing in the way and uh uh, once once they appear in a couple of turns time, um, well, they're, they're very, very strong units uh, in the rank right, and uh, they can trade quite happily with the Germans, although there are not very many of them. So they, they do provide a little bit of a check, um, whereas here it's a, uh, it's a sprint. Yes, um, yeah. we, are, we, are, we are indeed sprinting. All right, so let's yeah. see here. Yeah, the rivers don't, don't actually, at the moment, um, provide any uh, movement penalty uh, it's only in a wet turn um, that they do otherwise they're just other terrain um, and don't, don't really have a, have a problem with them um, 
and uh, about these uh, Belgian towns, they they don't count for victory points uh, because the Belgians, uh, you know, are not not in the war. They don't count for victory points for the Germans, unless you're counting whether they are going to lose without them. So they they count in a victory point uh, loss um, uh, um, uh, aspect, but not for victory points. As in, I'm going to win because I've just walked into these cities, if you like. Um, right. I think yeah, we're going to keep him moving over to the, let's see, he was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And these guys are going to go. Six, six. We need to deal with what town is that? No, um, south of Namur. There, you're a little. Oh, uh, I don't, it, it, there isn't a town there. It's just it's not a, a town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's we, just, uh, yeah, it's just uh, the confluence of the uh, the rivers at Namur. We're going to send a couple divisions to, to deal with them. And yes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And these guys were here, and they're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. It feels like I don't really need the headquarters yet for provision of supply, etc. Mm -hmm. um, things are very constricted here, so I feel good about that move. Yep. Um, let's see. So now there's not a lot of combat. I, I can't really get to Mauberge. No. Um, with quite. the infantry yet, but yeah. um, I can screen. Yes. And now let me take a look at down here. This is actually the that was the there was not a whole lot of thought about that no. move. The thought is going to come in here and i think what we're going to do is uh by the way for everybody uh that doesn't know the game the stacking is up to six units in a hex so yeah um yeah in the in the physical game it can get quite stacky um Oh, I think we've lost Pat, actually. Um, yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, he's dropped off. And uh, uh, actually, that might be me. Um, 
I'm not seeing any movement here, so uh, wondering if uh, my I've disconnected from him. Uh, um, can't see Pat coming back at the moment, so hopefully everybody can uh, still hear me. Um, uh, and uh, can uh, yeah, uh, somebody point out uh, if you can still hear me. Um, we've had a disruption here, and um, hello, anybody? Yeah, um, thanks, David. Sorry, yeah, it, so it's not me, it's Pat. Um, oh, right. Um, ah, I just got a message from Pat, and um, he's had a power outage, would you believe? Well, um, I think possibly uh, Marta Hari's been working in uh, in my um, uh, on my side for the moment. And, uh, yeah, so we've... Uh, uh, yeah, we've got a little bit of a hiatus here, but um, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So uh, as you can see, it's a it's a, it's a very very skewed uh, Western Front now, uh, and it's uh, be interesting to see what uh, what uh, what happens uh, from now on. Um, a couple of interesting things here is that the HQ uh, markers here. So uh, there's there's three all stacked together in Brussels here. So uh, they're able to pro provide supply. Normally, you get supply from cities and towns, which are the dots and the sort of uh, you know grey scrambled egg kind of look. Uh, but you can also get them from the um, from the HQs as well. And apologies, I think we're just about to get a helicopter coming overhead. So I think the war has really started in earnest with uh, possibly airborne invasions and actually economic warfare with the. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, electrics going out where Pat is, so um, yeah, it's it's full on. Uh, Taytala Creek, really, yeah. Um, so yeah, they're they're very useful. They they have uh, a movement value of six, yeah, of three, uh, six on this map, of course. Um, but they also have uh, that the one factor is actually a shift. They can have, it's like a kind of artillery shift, if you like, um, which they can also provide to uh, to the uh, uh, to uh, the, the various units attacking um, uh, within uh, with where they are or adjacent to them. Um, they get a slightly different role uh, during the, the trench time and um, you uh, you get um, uh, essentially if you want to advance you need to have uh, an HQ um, with you or adjacent to you so they tend to kind of telegraph uh, the attacks. Um, trenches are thankfully not lots of little counters you put on units. Uh, they're effectively a modifier. Um, and that modifier comes down in, in strategic turns. Uh, and it varies between front. Um, but effectively, it's just a defensive modifier in the game. So all that stuff is kind of abstracted out. I think we just about have Pat um, back. Pat, hello. You there? Hey, I am. I'm on my iPad. Let everything oh. has to cycle through, and I shall return. But, oh, okay. That's cool. good. Good Power that. went out, which means the Wi-Fi went out, which means my computer restart. You know, you know the drill. Yeah, yeah. I think it, it was. It was. Uh, I think it was some work by my spies. I was thinking on the Allied side, which uh, was uh, yes, the yes. Stani, your. Uh, Somebody came to uh, Florida and, and and just just flipped a switch on a transformer for all I of. Know. Yeah. So. Uh, it was it uh, was one of, it was a classic like you know ten seconds, boop boop you know <laughs> yeah just, just enough to do damage. Yes, indeed, um, lovely. Don't love those things. Uh, I've been having a mobile signal problem for the last couple of days here, but um, they um, uh, the the particular uh, provider has decided to do maintenance uh, within my village and um, uh, put in some rather cryptic messages saying that. Uh, it was ongoing but would stop tomorrow um, or would start tomorrow and would stop the day after and in fact it was ongoing and stopped today so um, 
yeah, <laughs> get old, uh, get old Vodafone. Um, but uh, yeah, we're back up and running uh, on our mobile signal as well here, um, as well. So um, I will. I am going yeah. to bring my phone. I'm getting my phone. I'm going to bring it inside. So if I, if there's Wi-Fi gumminess, I'll okay. at least be able to tether, and okay. we can just continue. But right. let me. Um, let me go proceed. I, I just worked to go get all my devices so I could in, right. just let you know that I didn't, you know, rage quit. No, um, no, it was just uh, whether it was me. Uh, I, was, I was just wondering, yeah, oh yeah. God, uh, you know, it, it, can I, but the, the stream was still running but from my end. Um, what, I, what I might do then, um, just as a you know, thing, is that I actually might get on with the East map maybe. Go then, ahead. Uh, go. Might, as well, uh, might as well do that. Um, and uh, yeah, so. Um, here we are on the east map. Let's uh, zoom in a little, and we've got the eastern front here. Now, one thing you will note is that the Russians don't have any HQs, so they're entirely reliant on supply from uh, the uh, the towns and cities. Um, there's no flexibility there. Also, there's no capability of getting any combat shifts either. So, uh, anyway, let's uh, let's start doing some movement here. So uh, we can do here uh, two, and of course we've got this marsh in the way. Now marsh uh, costs two to move into, so uh, effectively none of these guys are going to be able to get into there. Um, so we're going to be stacking uh, north of that. Um, and uh, possibly um, actually with the cavalry, we might go there and move that cavalry three, four, five as well. Right, uh, and as far as the, um, uh, the kind of sequence that goes, you're not meant to look at uh, opponent stacks, um, I believe opponent stacks as well. So uh, that'll do for first army. Second army is facing a little bit of a you know a line of troops here, quite a lot uh, troops here. So uh, I think we will stretch the cavalry out this way. Reasonable. 
and then down in the case of really awkward hiding this isn't it um, the, um, uh, it's difficult to see whether we have stacks or not everywhere so certainly I think we have to do something about that stack there okay so are you back oh, i am back all you need to do is of Hello. course it's still shadowing me in the um can you hear me can you yeah, hear yeah, me yeah. okay you just need yes. to yeah, just yeah. start start a new room called alan pat because it's shadowing yeah, yeah. me in the yeah and i can get back uh, in hello everybody sorry about that uh there you go although i'm pretty impressed that everything came on reset so quickly hmm. okay you bang it? Yep. yeah yeah all right so let's uh you're on the east map moving uh yeah well, i'll pause there because um I, I was just about to start doing galicia but um I'll, I'll stop there for the moment and we'll get back to the west map all right uh, sorry so sorry everyone sorry sorry all right it's all right all right what, what the heck let me see where my move all right i i believe i had just moved into troy verges which which is what cut the power off obviously right. yeah so like let it. me yep. let me see here um yeah just check here can everybody hear pat just uh just uh somebody send out a little message uh if you wouldn't mind um uh, And we're up to uh, 11 watching now, double figures. Oh, wow. Yeah. My non-existent sponsors will be so proud. Your non-existent. Yeah. yeah. My imaginary sponsors would be uh, mightily impressed. Um, this is, of course, sponsor free. I cannot hear you. Oh, now I hear you. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I could always all hear right, you. Right. Yep, yep, yep. It, it kind of blipped for a second okay all right, all right, all right. so let's see sponsor free yeah thanks david thanks for letting us know um just uh it's like kind of isolated that's so, the first time this has happened in in quite a few streams with quite a few people i was a little what what i think i think i am fine down in the south i have zero interest in um i can't advance you're in the way <laughs> and uh okay so i think you're good, you're good to go on the west map i think so i think we're gonna do that there yep 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 we moved through troy's verges yep 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 we've got a little cab screen and we've got a my let's i think i do want to go though two four six to there okay all right so right. that's that Oh, okay. you can continue on the east map. Uh, okay, we'll do. We'll do. Fair, fairly intuitive in terms of what I had to do. Fine. So, uh, just organizing things on the uh, east here. Um, Pretty me. I got this new computer, what, a couple, of, maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago. And in my mind, I'm still used to like the old computer I had where it would, that, that, you know, once the Wi Fi was available and everything, it would have taken like forever to reset. And yeah. now, you know, and now, like, I literally, it was, I think we were without power for all of five minutes, came back and like everything was fine, you know, pull up Chrome and restores everything immediately i'm like wow yeah, it's so nice having a computer that's not a a, a slog so. Ooh, indeed, indeed. Uh,
Touch it down in Serbia. So we get what we're doing here. Everybody's in a very short leash in Serbia. Yeah. Supply wise. Uh, it is, yes, indeed. I think I'm probably there. The what's the primer again on supply lines, um, Alan? It's um, four, 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 four right? Four. To, to either a headquarters or a um, secondary source. You know, uh, that's right. Yeah, town, town. town city fortress you know any of those yeah. yes indeed um, which must then trace back to a similar chain if i recall correctly I, you use a chain of those to get back to an ultimate supply source yeah yeah, yeah. And David Eidelbach, that's really your main tether in the game. So, yes. um, Wes, uh, there via event, okay. So another um, those pre-war chits that we were talking about, interesting is some of those are um, involve you know Bulgaria maybe having cold feet just like the Turks did, which would make that more difficult, if I recall correctly. And there's certainly one that makes Romania a little more pro central powers in terms of how they might enter. Yeah. And those occur via event and require and, and we'll get to the events later countries. So all uh, there everybody's it's going to collect resources when we get to these strategic phases and you can spend resources to rebuild units or you can use them to try to pick events and if you pick events events is where um ted the designer wrapped up technological advancements as well as um diplomatic events like that so some nations for instance like the united states it, they're going to enter they would normally i what was it strategic turn O, and they got bumped up to p because there's no Belgian yeah. war atrocities going on out there. So some of them, yeah, you know, right. like they're going to enter at a very specific time, but there are events that can be drawn that can mess with those timetables, yeah. you know, spend resources to mess with the, you know, those timetables and move them around. And uh, for both sides, you know, for instance, there's another chit. Um, it's why I said I found the pre-war chits very believable. I, I like that mechanic, and I kind of independently for um, Vietnam operational title I designed kind of did a similar thing, but I made it mandatory. Where it's a scenario where there was conflicting operational guidance given the commanders, so it, you know, kind of chit pulling helps inform. Yeah, you know, you can either lose victory points and ignore the strategic guidance to the operational commander or use it, and I kind of really liked the fact that the the pre-war chits were so plausible that i i, I almost felt obviously they they weren't fully play tested and, and and you know uh the designer chose to use them as optional but just as a personal opinion i i would have made them mandatory if i was just because it in some ways that the a historical their a historical nature lead to a more historical initial approach to the whole war you know i don't know how this is going to go so one of the chits for instance that's very within the realm of historical possibility is bumping up italy's time frame to enter the war as a possibility but there isn't a chit that makes 
the Italians enter the war on the central power side, right? You, no. you know, that that's just not within, that wasn't going to happen, no. it, 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 you know? Duh. So, okay. but that, that, that's how the diplomatic stuff all works. It's, it, it floats around and uh, Bulgaria, for instance, normally will never enter the war on the allied side, but is it delayed? You know, does it happen a little earlier? That's possible. You know, Rom Romania is the one fence country that's out there. Uh, yeah, I, I and um, and when you, of course you put the chit in into the cup, if you like, on the strategic turn, uh, whatever uh, correct strategic turn it is. Um, but the thing is, of course, you don't pick chits out until the operational turn, and there's three operational turns after a strategic turn. Right. So you don't actually know which which turn you're going to get it anyway. Um, right. So uh, you know, there's there, there's variability there as well. It's not and there's a, a chance, and there's a chance you may, you may spend the resources on nothing. You may get no result. You know, you know, you, mm -hmm. you tried. And, you yeah, yeah, indeed. And, and also, you may not use all the chits right. that you've got. So you might not actually pick it. In which case, it'll still be there. Now you'll get to it at some point, but um, you might not get to it even in the strategic turn set of operational turns that you expect, uh, because there's so many chits, and you picked as many as you could, uh, but you didn't get the one that is Bulgaria or Romania or whatever or Greece or whatever like that. So um, there is there is that variability, and it's not it's not it's kind of programmed, but not not uh, not tactically programmed certainly. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. So anyway, I'm, 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 I think I'm sorted. So okay. uh, we can I do it with the uh, combat phase, and it's over in the west first. You straighten out the line a little bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see what you did up here in Russia. Oh, you straight. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. little tweaks and maneuvers. The Russians are tough um, early work because they don't have headquarters. So speaking to the Ooh. supply thing, I don't know if you already went, went through all this, but yeah, yeah, he, you can't really move beyond, say, Lutz, yeah, yeah, you know, there's a tether for those Russians. So yeah, let's exactly. see here. So combat phase. Combat's pretty simple, huh? It's just yeah. pick it out, go to the chart, and see what happens. So I would love to attack Mauberge, but I think that that is foolish. Yes. Uh, we have one attack that we are going to do. Yes. That I that I can think of off the top of my head, and that is we are going to attack um, that one. The what is it? The third group, kind yeah, of guarding the Ardennes there, right out of yeah. Namur. Yes. So okay. let's see here. I've got six, and you've got two defending. That's so we right. go to the, we go to the combat chart, and yep. I look at the combat chart, and there is one to three. So we're on CRT A, which you guys yes. can't see. It's one to three yes. units defending, and the yep. odds ratios. Three to two one. tables, two tables. The defending unit is one to three units, or there's four to six. Right. So two to two, depending on how big the defender is. Sorry, carry on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, the B, the B table basically, there's more casualties involved. Is, yeah. is what happens on that table. Indeed. And so let's see. We're at three to one. Yes. And I'm looking for modifiers, and I don't see any. There should be the river, I think. I think the river yeah. is one to the left. And you're uh. Let's yeah, everybody's attacking across the river, so it is one to the left. Yeah. And then we shift one to the right because you're French and you're defending and it's yeah, August. Yeah. So we're in three to one, and I don't see any DRMs going on. No concentric. Uh, nope. nope, nope. Nope. So it's no, it's no a special sh things. straight up three to one. This could go bad. At the worst cases, everybody dies yeah. for, for the Germans. <laughs> and the best case is uh, you die. And yes. so let's see what happens. I shall roll the die. And D6. And the result, four looks positive. And as I look back at the chart, four is I have one guy die and you die. So Okay, one each. Yeah, so yeah, four. Yeah. It's, it's a one, two result. So it'd be one, two, two divisions, one division. But, you know. So, so let's get rid of the east map here. Um, blocking things in from the vision here. So uh, this goes to eliminate Europe. And this goes to eliminate Europe. And that is my first attack in the West. Oh. And let me see here. And I could advance after combat. Yep. And I think I probably will. Mm -hmm. And I think I will probably not. 
let's see here. Two, four, six, eight. And I, eh, I'm going to be conservative. You could probably put him out of supply, but I don't see you putting three armies out of supply with your one cavalry unit, your yeah. first group dashing upward bravely. So that would be a very French thing to do, though. Yeah. So yeah. Um, let's see. Did you make yourself vulnerable up by Luxembourg? Well, I didn't move. <laughs> no, uh, via your via setup, via uh, setup. Yeah. So you get, so you've got five. That'd be six defending, four, seven, thirteen. So that'd be a two to one. You do have your HQ as well down there. Yeah, what's the range on that for providing support? Uh, I think it's uh, in the hex or adjacent. I think. Yeah. The f it was on me. I should have sent a headquarters adjacent to those guys and gotten a plus one. I think. Uh, column shifts. Uh, attack defender. Stacked with or adjacent to any of the units involved in the combat. Yeah, but. Is that that's not mountain, right? That's rough that you're in. Uh, yes, it's it's one shift. And it's one left. It's gonna that'd be a two to one. That feels nasty. Um, yeah, I don't. This early on, I don't feel like taking the casualties. So I'm gonna out schlieffen schlieffen and like you know, don't provide any, don't do anything down there. Just you know, mm -hmm. let them come at you. Um, yep. Although I'd really like to take Longwe. And you're just too strong in the south. So that's it. Wow. In terms of attacks, a very anticlimactic. Yes. First yes. Schlieff in turn. Um, no, no Angel of Mons, no skirmishing around the mirror. And, and no. So, okay. Just the big Feldgrau monster, you know, coming down the corridor, you know. Maybe that's it's just a, an early phony war, maybe. Uh, yeah. Maybe. Uh, okay, so um, so over to east. east. Right. So uh, we certainly have a combat uh, up near Instaberg, uh, fifty-four sixteen. Yes. Uh, just uh, share that to everybody. Uh, so I have uh, two four six eight, uh, ten twelve fourteen sixteen, and you have uh, eight. Eight. So two to one. Gosh, and um, that's that's kind of a Russian thing, really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Are there any terrain effects? I don't think so. No. Uh, nope, yeah. nope, nope. Town, town doesn't have any nope. effects. So it's so a it's just straight, straight two to one. Uh, it's two, so it's on the CRTA. So it's kind of the same role, really, that we were having uh, over on the other side. So uh, let's just uh, get to uh, D6 and see what we roll. A three. A three is a one, one. Well, you know, that's that's very Russian. Yeah, got to uh, do what you got to do. Let's see yeah. who I'm going to lose. Eliminate Europe. Uh, we are going to lose the reserve, the reserve division, of course. Eliminate Europe. Okay. Anything else? Uh, yeah. So um, down by Tannenberg. Right. Um, to trying to completely ignore the name <laughs> uh we have uh yeah we're attacking your three four four unit there so we have three in the five. in the salient yes 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 yeah so the guy's sticking out south, south of tannenberg uh so i've got three four five uh ten uh ten and fifteen to four so slightly underneath three to one so it's two to one again if you just had artillery just out, out. Yes, indeed. There's yeah. no terrain. Oh, I'm in marsh. You are no, I'm in forest. Uh, forest. Forest is only in bad weather, is a shift. Yep. yep. At the moment, it's fine. So it's another two to one. Uh, so maybe doing a lot of these. Um, let's see what we can. Oh, up. your attack above was actually a one to one. Was it? Yeah. Oh, uh, hang on. Oh, this one. Yeah. 
We forgot about the column shift thing. Uh, oh, was that Russians as well? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Okay, so it was a one-to-one. -one. Sorry. All right. Uh, so that was a two-one. So I lose. I lost two. Okay. Uh, so another one. Easy come, easy go. Um, well, that's right. Dad, that's the Russians. Yeah, indeed. Okay. So uh, yeah. So here, this is one-to-one uh, -one as well. Then. No, this is you've got um, five to fifteen. Oh yeah, three to three to one going down to two to one. Correct. Yeah. So on to two to one. Let's uh, see how that goes. Five, much better. Uh, two to one. It's a one two. Well, okay, it's a one one. Um, so Send let's... to eliminate Europe. Okay, and uh, so we might as well advance. Huh? Kind of what we're here for. So. Um, yeah, so uh, that's it on that front. On the southern front, um, let's see, we are looking at... Uh, this part's the part that I think is going to sting. Yeah. Poor, this is yeah. going to sting a little bit. Uh, yeah, so um, I think we are going to... Uh, I think we're going to attack uh, next to the H... One of the th one of the things, uh, CMO, to answer your question, and hi, John Longshore, welcome aboard, is there is no 17, but what happens is what you've seen implementing, both the French and the Russians get a one column shift to the left. They get a column shift in the bad direction on an odds-based CRT, basically, for attacking or defending. Yes. So the only thing, so uh, the designer doesn't make the French attack and get casualties you know a la plan 17 but it's more if if they attack it's it's going to be a bad attack it's the only little like i said i think it's wonderful and ted if you're out there listening i, I I'm, I'm already very very pleased you know just even wandering through it i think it, it he i i i would say the designer opted to not put people on rails and have like a special chromey rules about 17 plan 17 attacks the only thing it does is it leaves the french a little stronger than they normally should be you know you know you know by not launching bad attacks shall we say so you know i but within the framework of not wanting to like hey if you start and you start adjacent to the germans you've got to launch x number of attacks or anything it it doesn't happen that having said that the french the allied player there are these event shits that come out that force the um later in the war like a hague offensive where you have to launch x amount of attacks even if they're two to ones or whatever i think it would be probably doable as a house rule or something to have there be a plan 17 shit and just duplicate that. Yeah. You know, the, the same effect, you've got to launch an effect, at least three attacks at, you know, at least, you know, um, blah, blah odds and make the French do a little attacking, but yeah, you know, it would be just like one of those event shits, but just starting the game. Okay. Just, just my little thought on the matter, but yeah, I, but, but I admire the, Hey, the real effect of all this is that attacking is going to be more bloody for you and defending you know yeah it's not going to yeah. be good for you no indeed so uh right so we've got um some attacks in uh, in Galicia here so that's um we are attacking the single unit next to the fourth uh austrian hq so you're worth a three there um i've worth two four six six uh eight ten twelve fourteen fifteen so that's a five to one, uh, down one to a four to one for being Russian at this point in the war. Uh, and I mean, if you want to use your HQ, um, you can do. Make oh. it a three to one. Where, where are, I'm sorry, where are you attacking? I was. Uh, so the 28th division, which is next to your fourth uh, army HQ, um, just north of Chernovitz. Ah, yes, we're absolutely going to lend artillery support there. Okay, so it's a three to one then. And that's what? It's a, did you do your column shift? Yeah, yeah. So it's okay, a five right. to one, down to four to one, down to three to one for your HQ. So you okay. flip your HQ over. 
it. There you go. And uh, three, you won. A three. Um, and again on CRTA, three to one, three is a one, two. So, uh, just north of Cernowitz, there, right? Okay, yeah. so we are going to eliminate Europe. What did you say the result was? I'm sorry, oh, no, no, not, not that one. Sorry, the one further up, one further up, so right next to the HQ. So, your HQ couldn't have affected what was the result again. Uh, it was a uh, one two, but you only okay. have yeah, one yeah. unit there. Eliminate Europe. Okay. The one, yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah. And so I will, of course, advance. Okay. Uh, and uh, what are we doing here? We will. Um, have a combat next to, I can't see the name of it. Oh, uh, we will attack Tarnapol. All right. Six, six there. Uh, and I've got uh, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40. Tarnapol, 30, are you attacking Tarnapol or Brody? Oh. I think you're attacking Brody. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, yeah, it's Brody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, 16, I think. Uh, we can. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 15, 16. Yeah, 16 to six. Six. Two so to one. Two to one. Down one to, one to one to one. Yeah. So let's roll on that. Uh, three. One to one is two, one. Eliminate Europe. Brody holds. Probably Brody. It's probably pronounced Brody. Okay, and elsewhere. I'm a little relieved in the East. It's not going as badly as horribly as I thought. The extra shift is uh, quite uh, uh, useful. Uh, Yeah, so we think we think we'll attack. Uh, that's two units there. But I know what's underneath. Uh, yeah, so we'll attack. Um, where is it? Uh, two hexes north of Shamer. Um, on just on the river there. Uh, the one oh six landwehr hex. The one oh six landwehr hex. Yeah. Oh, I see it. The cavalry, yeah. So oh, so one stack against one stack. Okay. Yeah. So we got you got five. I got two. This this hex this hex here, right? That's yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, two, four, six, eight to five. So it's uh, it's a one to one. Going to a one to two because uh, of the shift. Uh, let's see how it works out. A two. Uh, so that's a T zero. So I don't get anywhere there. I. And right uh, down to Serbia. Got down to Serbia. Um, I say it's rather difficult to know when you've got a stack or not. Um, I don't know if it's the contrast here. Um, I can see it pretty well. It's at the bottom. You can see the white. There's a white effect of like the like like you'd see white sides of a counter. Yeah, possibly. Or do you mean if I have a stack? Oh, remember you yeah, can't you have a stack. Yeah. Remember, yeah, you I should be able to be to see. Yeah, it. yeah. Um, it's a little bit. It's, the Austrians. It's very the, the 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 Serbs. It's very very straightforward. Well, I've got I've got news for you, and the reason you yeah. can't see is because in Serbia there are no stacks. Uh, no stack. <laughs> right, fair enough. Um, so it's just uh, yeah. So uh, we'll we'll attack uh, to the east of Belgrade here. The forty so, eighth uh, Landwehr, forty yeah, second yeah. uh, H Landwehr. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll attack across the river here. So 
I've got two, four, six, eight, ten to your two. Five to one. So it's five to one down one for the river. So four to one. Yeah, and I don't think you get any. I'm going to double check real quick, but I'm pretty sure. Down the Serbs are. Right. I don't. Right. Indeed. I don't think there's a special. That's in the playbook, isn't it? Yeah, it's near the top. Special rules. Uh. Yeah, it's just the French and the Russians. That's it. So go ahead. You've got a you've got a three to one against uh, four, that poor li- four, to one. four to one against that poor little yeah. land there. Yep. Yep, indeed. Um, so let's roll the dice for that. A two. Uh, so it's a one two. So yeah, good. So am I. And advancing, I think I certainly shall. Let's get across the river. Into Austrian territory, it's the Sava, or the Dan- no, it's the Danube, actually, isn't it? Um, okay, and uh, that's kind of it, really. So it's uh, across to the next movement phase, uh, second movement phase. The so move go on. ahead, go ahead and start on the west if you. All right. It's going to take a little thought. Yes, yes. Surprisingly, uh, just want to check on those. Uh, y units, they they can't move. Is that right? That, that was the uh, yes playbook open. Yes, X, X, Y, and V. Yeah, can't move. So the guys in my birds are just stuck, like uh, lambs to the slaughter, uh, which is great. Um, so uh, right, what can we do here? Um, While you're doing that, I'm going to think about the east. I might even move because I might not have a lot to do. Sure, sure. It's starting to feel natural to use that simultaneous movement thingy. It does. It does. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it does. I'll see if I can arrange it so how maybe both the maps are, are available on the stream. Uh, it's probably um, just a case of me mucking around with the, the windows here. But let um, uh, me keep it as it is. Um, Okay. Um, now, when does that happen? Am I able to do um, any restrictions on strategic movement on the first turn? No strategic movement. No strategic movement. Okay. Right. Well, in the case of there's going to have to be some serious shuffling, shall we say. Um,
six count. Alan, to support an yes. attack, to support an attack, do you ha is it the same thing? You have to be, uh, do you have to yeah. be adjacent to the enemy or just adjacent to a unit that's attacking? Adjacent to any unit in the combat. Okay. So either side. And you're flipped for the whole operational turn when you've been flipped, correct? Uh, that's correct. Um, I think it's just the operational turn. No, once a strategic turn. Got it. So you basically use them the whole. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole book. Kind of attempt to, to do it if you can. Uh, so here we go. Okay. Well, I think I'm done with the French. I am almost done with the Eastern Front as well. I am just pondering something out. It's the um. If the uh, there were some extra markers just to mark attacks, but there's uh, none of that in the game. I don't think they've added any here. No, no. So, never mind for that. So how are we doing on the east map? Um, I am. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing. Well, let me look at the Austrians real quick. The uh, Serbian front. I didn't. Um... No, I want the river. Uh, I could buy time. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. I am done. All right, let me see what you did on the west. It's a mystery to me. Oh, I see what. Yeah, you're. Yep, let's. Bu yep. It's the big shuffle. Um, so there was quite a stack. Uh, at the north end anyway, so we just uh, we just do that and uh, we get the cavalry back to St. Quentin, which is probably uh, a bit of a target. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, so uh, and up to the swamp, so the swamp should slow you down somewhat. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what we're looking to do here, uh, but I'm not sure that line will uh, anything like hold, um, but we'll see how we go. All uh, right. Right, so attacks, we do have them. Um, I believe we have one in uh, just near Morange. Um, uh, Morange? Yeah, oh, no, uh, near, in, this, um, near Nancy. Uh, you've got a stack of three. Um, I've got my HQ opposite. Um, ah, those guys. Yeah. In the salient? The guys in the salient or? No, 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 no. No, south of that. So you've got Mohanj, which is uh, just behind your front line. Right. And then it's, it's in front of that. Uh, so it's uh, south, southwest 
southwest of it. Okay, where you have two, you've got two hexes facing it. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. That's right. Yeah. So right. we have. Uh, I'm defending with nine. Yes. So I've got three, six, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, eleven, fourteen, uh, and another six, twenty. Twenty-nine. So it's two to one. Uh, okay. So and then down one for being French this turn. And we'll use the extra two as well. So it's a two to one net. Two to one net. So uh, flip. Two to one in Marge. And let's see how we do. Uh, Bless people. you. <laughs> well, they're off in the corner. Uh, right. Six. Whoa. That's a, ver that's a very okay. good roll. A, a bit of, bit of, bit of crawl there. Um, yeah. With the, the pants along a huge. Bit of elan. So yes. I lose three. Yeah. Gosh. Wow. Okay. That's a hell of a roll. Whoa, 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 whoa. I just deleted. Got out. Whoa. Yeah, hang on. Hang on. No. Yeah, no. Let's come back in this game. Uh, um, eliminate Europe. Eliminate Europe. Eliminate Europe. You take no losses That's and you right. get to advance. I do. Um, so I might as well. There is your encouragement to do a plan 17. You can. There is there is another one, um, which I haven't told you about yet, but I do remember from the old game. Is there is a point to doing this? Um, and uh, yeah, you want to trip the Germans. That's uh, no, actually, you want to trip the French, because in the strategic turn A, it's only the French and British that get replacements. Ah, you can build them up build them in a much more useful place yeah roundabout way so yeah. actually, that, that zero three sounds brilliant but actually part of me was kicking myself and going damn <laughs> i didn't get any yeah. losses because <laughs> it'd be very useful for a couple of those to be dead now um but yeah that's uh uh you know there's a slight um any other attacks uh yes uh one more which um Hopefully it doesn't go as well. <laughs> uh, we uh, are just uh, just west of Mulhouse, right down the bottom near near the Swiss border. Uh, two hexes up, three hexes up from the Swiss border. We'll, okay, I'm slightly sticking out there. Yes, yes. So we have uh, you have three, just three, just we three. We have three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, uh, fifteen. And another nine, it's uh, twenty-four. Uh, so that's that's an eight. One. That's an eight to one. Yeah. Uh, I don't think you're going to take any losses. No, that's, that's your plan. Yeah. Hmm. There is. Uh, it's mm, mounting. So that's um, mounting is a shift, of course. Um, uh, it's a super high odd attack, so I get a plus one for each each above that. So be an so it's an eight to one. It will come down to a seven to one. Coming, to, excuse me, coming down to a six to one um, uh, with being French and right. mountains. So it'll be a plus one. So it'll be a yeah, it'll be a five to one plus one, which is well, I might use lose a unit. Um, maybe I should be a little bit more judicious with this. Yeah, maybe I think I should. Maybe I should. Um, Yeah, actually, what will... Hmm. Yeah, actually, what we will do is we'll attack with only the, the northernmost he two hexes. It might improve things. For now, for now. Six. Uh, six and... Fifteen. Nine, 15. 15. So it's a five to one. Five to one going down to a three to one. Right. Yeah, we'll do that, and then we might 
quite a steep one from Belfort into the one opposite, which is nine to three, which is three to one down to one to one. Uh, all right, well, you're going to do that three to one first? Yeah, yeah, all I'll right, do the three right. to one first. So let's see how that goes. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, you're dead anyway. Right. Okay. Go ahead and advance. Uh, might as well. And then the one next door. Which, uh, so we've got uh, a one to one there. Um, which may well kill you. Um, let's see how that goes. A four. One to one is a one one, which does in fact kill you, but at least I take a loss. That guy, right? Yeah, yes. yeah. Okay, okay. And again, I might as well advance there. Um, which way you're getting anywhere near Belfort either, so that's fine. Uh, I'll move to there. Okay. Um, slightly, slightly more, um, yeah, slightly more successful than I thought I'd be, um, even with the one shift. Um, you yeah, should attack somewhere else. Uh, I might attack, yeah, next to the breakthrough I had up at um, Montange, so one to the south. There. Okay. So you've got six, and I've got three, six, nine, eleven, eleven, and six, seventeen to six. Ah, just below three to one. It's annoying. So uh, it's a one. To a two to one. So it's a two to one, but it's a one yeah. to one. Uh, yes, that's right. So let's do that. Uh, Ah, there we go. Uh, <laughs> there, right? So, uh, yeah, let's uh, make one there. Make one there. Okay. Like, you're like, that's the kind of death I want to see in my French army. Actually, I might lose the second one from that exception. So, yeah, we'll, we'll stick with three there. No, that's good. Um, yeah, so that's that's the French tax. All right, let's. Uh, I, I have maybe, Ooh. maybe a couple in the east. Okay. So. so to the east here. So, where are we? Here? Are we East Prussia or um, or Galicia? We're in Galicia, and I need to really think about this before I do it. Mm -hmm. Seven. So, in Galicia, if you'll see the forty seventh division on my side, yes, uh, it's kind of yes, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody adjacent is attacking, so that okay. is. We've got seven attacking your three, so that is a two to one, and you're Russian, so it's a three to one. Yeah. And then we're going to throw in a little artillery. Yep. And do this as a four to one, and we're going to see what happens. All right. Okay. Uh, Five. Oh. Audacious Austrian attack. Yes. Uh, there we go. And that is what we call a spoiling attack. We are not advancing. Happy where we are. And <laughs> let's see here. I don't, yeah, I don't think any of that's a good idea. None, none of this looks like a good idea at all. Um, We might, we're very tempted to do a premature Tannenberg. Okay. But I need to really think about this. Let me look at the chart. It'd be on the three to one. I just 
don't think I can take. Oh, yes, I could. So we're we would be attacking with seven. You, you, it's going to be a one to one. You're rushing two to one. We've got the artillery there with old, um, you know, mm-hmm. Abbott and Costello there running the Eighth Army. Um, so that would make it three to one, and then we could Oberost. So we could get two attacks, but I think. If we take a loss, well, if we take a loss, I think on three to one, you're probably going to take a loss. Uh, what I can't do is roll a one. Mm. And I think with the overall, you have to declare it before the first attack. Okay. Yeah, right. That's why I'm thinking very heavily about this. And I think. Yeah, at the end of the movement phase, but yeah, don't worry about that. Uh, I'm not gonna. Well, this is the yeah, yeah. I got you. Yeah. This is kind of sort of the end of the movement phase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about that. But uh, uh, yeah, before you do one attack, you. I th- I think we're gonna hold off. I, I I don't. I just don't feel good about doing that. All right. So okay. that so, is that. Maybe von Prittwitz is still in charge. Um, it, in the Berger Ludendorff haven't taken over. No, what they're doing is they're screaming for reinforcements and, <laughs> and, 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 and making von Moltke's nerves, you know, yeah. get progressively and progressively worse and, and screaming about how dire it is. So that they're yeah. not attacking for that reason. So that's that. Okay, cool. Good. Yeah. Um, that's East front and then near East, there's nothing to do. So that's kind of uh, the August one turn. So getting over to the, is there a cleanup phase, or that's it? Uh, there is strategic movement, which we're not doing on the first turn. Right, right. I'll hit the move flags on everybody. That's that seems like a good uh, yeah. effort. So uh, just get on to that. So yeah, um, strategic move phase, turn record phase. So advance the turn marker. So. Let Let's do that. That Ooh. that seems exciting. I uh, can't remember which map it's on. Is it on the west? Yeah, it's on the west all the way to the left at the bottom. Ah, there we go, yeah. So, yeah, you can, you can uh, for, for everybody watching, if you're still watching, uh, yeah, the, it, it kind of goes down, down, uh, even though it's, uh, it's um, down and then across to the left um, because of the orientation of the map. Uh, but, yeah, so you can see the British there um, waiting for the, uh, the naval battles to sort themselves out. Uh, to come in at the end of next turn. Right. Um, so, so yeah. what do you want? What do you want to do, Alan? Do you want to keep moving, or do you want to pause it here and yeah, I think we're, up we're, Thursday? Okay. Yeah, we, we're getting close. Uh, not that far away from the two-hour mark. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll pick it up again on Thursday. So um, hopefully, it's um, it's been enjoyable for um, our fourteen um, watches here. Gosh, I had uh, a, I had a, I had a lot. Of, I had a lot of fun. Yep. And uh, yeah, and and um, our, our uh, history of the Second World War podcast guy. Um, yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for doing some crowd control, possibly here. Uh, although it seems like you're in the wrong war. Um, uh, yeah, but, well, uh, Wes ran a podcast for approximate. His name's Wesley Wesley Livesey, and he ran a podcast for approximately seven years history of the Great War. Ah, okay, then fine. So All he right. just re- he recently morphed. From uh, okay. Wes, you should have called yourself history of the post-war and interwar period for a uh, for a few for a few weeks anyway. That <laughs> yeah. he yeah. he. I think uh, Wes, when did you rebrand? Was it you know two three months ago, something like that? When you just said, "All right, it's the Second World War now." But um, anyway, great to have you. Great to have you here. Yeah, um, thanks, yeah. thanks for everybody supporting and having a look. Hopefully, it's been entertaining and. Sorry, Pat. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I no, no. I, I was, I was one of Wes's first patrons. I think when, when, when he just started that sucker up. I remember sending him some reading material and articles about like British cavalry tactics in the Boer War and how they influenced their perception of yeah, you know, things and 
the great war and stuff like that. Good stuff. Great to have you here. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Wes. Yeah. Thank you, David um, Otto who's back and Simo yes. and yeah, yeah. yeah, some 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 regular um, t- regular tweeterati here. Um, we saw at the uh, at the Burma and also at the Tinian replays we did. And um, they're, yeah. they're on the YouTube channel if you want to have a quick look yourselves if uh, you haven't seen them already uh, to see those replays to see uh, uh, the kind of things we get up to here. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks again for uh, everybody um, everybody uh, ha- coming and having a look. And uh, thank you, Pat, as always. We will be yes. back on Thursday for the Thir- Tweezer Thursday. Same Tweezer time, same Tweezer channel. Yep. Indeed, indeed. And uh, that will be the second August turn for the Great War in Europe. So, uh, cool Le- probably less pre-game exposition, more. We'll probably indeed. get through two turns, I think. That's what it yeah. feels like, yeah. Yeah, so, well, certainly the one turn and maybe the strategic turn as well. Yeah, yeah. The stuff to do there, yeah. chits and stuff. There's a little bit of housekeeping. So, um, uh, but yeah, certainly should get to that point um, in, in, in on Thursday as well. So, yeah, I'll uh, hope to see you then. Thanks, thanks again, Pat. And um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll all see you then. So, thank uh, you. Until uh, until then, uh, bye. For